Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose and we do have some big updates today for both Xbox as well as PlayStation. Xbox did fix a big problem that was made crystal clear earlier this year, kind of reinvigorating the old 2013 Xbox One controversy, maybe not quite to that extent, but still certainly a problem. Thankfully though, Xbox is now listening and has released a very, very welcome update. Meanwhile, reportedly, a new PlayStation 5 console is on the way, but it might not necessarily be what you were expecting. I think for most people, they would either assume that this is a pro model or maybe even a slim revision, but this is actually something completely different, so do make sure to stay tuned for all of that. As always, though, if you find yourself enjoying the video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and of course, that bell button below. It does help out the channel a ton, and I do very, very much appreciate it. Let's just go and jump right into things, though, starting off with a brand new game announcement as EA has confirmed the many rumors that they are indeed working on a new Iron Man game that has its own original narrative. I mean, I know I've said this before, but yes, Disney is going all in on gaming, and I think this really is just the beginning of what's to come. I, I think we're going to see a lot of these Marvel heroes in the coming years, and that's either a good thing or bad, depending on if you like the Marvel Universe or not. Obviously, though, and this is one thing that I do know, Iron Man is a massive franchise and one of the more popular Marvel-based heroes. So as long as EA can do it justice, which I mean, that is the question right now, but as long as they can, this certainly has the potential of being another breakout hit for them as well as Disney. I mean, I can definitely envision how the gameplay would be in a AAA experience like this. And in fact, if you remember right, there was a lot of excitement years ago for another EA-based game where you can kind of fly around being Anthem. And it's hard not to recognize the similarities between the two IP here. So, I mean, fans are interested in this style of gameplay, and now it's just up to EA to get this right. What was really interesting about this announcement, though, is that EA Motive is actually the studio working on it. And the thing about that is that they're also working on Dead Space Remake. Of course, that's set to release in January of 2023, but if that does turn out to be a success, it does kind of make me wonder if they have the resources to continue on with that franchise while also working on this new Iron Man game. But let me know what you all think about this. Are you excited for a new Iron Man game developed by EA Motive? Now, we actually have a new handheld console to talk about today as Logitech has fully unveiled their G Cloud Streaming console. Really, the very idea of this happening I, th I think is interesting in the aspect it's one of the first major pushes into cloud-driven consoles as opposed to playing games natively. Now, I do think that there's a market for a device like this, I'd say more on the niche side of things, but it really just kind of depends on how well it performs and then obviously the cost. That one there, that, that one is the big one, but we did actually get some new details for this console today. It is releasing this October in the United States and Canada. It does have a 1080p LCD screen. It runs on an Android 11 OS. It's got a sleek, comfortable look to it, as you can see, and they did partner up with Tencent and Xbox. So there's some of the good, but you know, then comes the million dollar question there's the price. Well, that's the thing because they did officially set the price tag to $350. Now, if you pre-order it, you can get it for $300, but really in a post Steam Deck world, I mean, it's crazy to think about, but for $50 more or $100, depending on if you pre-order, you can get the Steam Deck at $400, which plays PC games natively. And on top of that, it can also stream games. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think the pricing just kind of took the air out of this console. When you think about it, though, you can kind of understand why Logitech priced it this way. One thing about Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and Steam is that they can sell their consoles at a loss or a near loss and still make money because they do have their very own storefronts. Logitech, though, they don't really have that privilege, and they're not making money post-launch as it supports third-party stores instead. So unfortunately, this is just a downfall for a device like this. I mean, a market for a device like this was already, I think, pretty niche, but the, the pricing here is definitely a problem, especially when you consider the Steam Deck. 
Okay, so let's just go and talk about Xbox, though. They've been very busy lately with TGS. They've had several, several Xbox Game Pass announcements. There was Gamescom last month. So there's just been this constant, constant barrage of Xbox news as of recent. But they actually just released what could be one of their most impactful long-term decisions. So this is in the form of a new Xbox console update where they quietly removed DRM or at least how it previously worked. Now, if you remember right, earlier this year, there was an Xbox network outage that lasted several, several days, and this revealed a possible DRM problem on Xbox consoles. A lot of players reportedly could not play their games during this outage despite owning their games, despite having their console set as the primary console, and despite having the physical disc on hand. Now, this didn't seemingly affect everybody, it didn't affect me actually, but there were several, several reports out out there of this happening to a lot of people and at the time there was a lot of questions as to exactly why this was even happening but anytime you can't play games that you own especially single player physical based games that don't need online connectivity well th th there's some kind of underlying issue there well, Xbox behind the scenes have been working on that problem, and reportedly they've now fixed some of those issues with Xbox's 2206 update. Now, for some reason, they've been a little quiet about these improvements, but thanks to YouTuber Hikikimura, he tested several games on his Xbox Series X completely offline to see if they would work with no issue. Well, thankfully, the results came back very, very good. He tried various physical Xbox Series and Xbox One games such as Resident Evil Village, Near Replicant, Devil May Cry, collection and even the xbox series only game judgment and they all installed and played without the need of an internet connection so i mean at the very least it appears xbox one and xbox series games do work for the most part completely offline including their installations if if you have a physical version now there will be some caveats here because certain games like forza horizon 5 and halo infinite as an example they don't actually come complete on disc so those specific games do need an internet connection for that first initial download as does xbox 360 and original xbox games those games don't actually run natively on the xbox series and xbox one so if you pop a 360 disc in that will actually download a special emulated version of said game so it goes without saying you will need internet connection to install those games. For that matter, most games anymore do have pretty large day one updates, which I mean, that's just a whole different problem. But if you do want those updates, that of course will need internet as well. Playing them offline after that though, which really was the big question here, seemingly has been fixed or at least to some degree, and Xbox has actually now confirmed this as well. The engineering lead at Xbox did post this in response over on Twitter. As you can see, Eden Marie says, yes, this is true since the 2206 update. We examined data since Series X and S launch and determined the online compatibility check isn't needed in the vast majority of cases for Xbox One discs. Some games may still need to be updated online after install to ensure the best experience. Again, as a part of those day one updates, you will need to install those to ensure the best overall experience. But based on what she's saying here and specifically mentioning Xbox One discs, it seems like playing offline will be much easier from this point forward. I, I know we don't want a repeat of what happened earlier this year, and this will go a long way in fixing that issue. Now, there are still obviously some questions on game preservation for the future. That hasn't really changed with this update. There are still questions of digital distribution and day one updates. If if Nintendo, Xbox, or PlayStation ever decide to take their servers down. That is a very, very major question. And there are still questions for certain games that don't come completed on their discs. So this doesn't really fix those issues. But again, in terms of offline play, this certainly is an improvement for Xbox. Now, speaking of digital distribution, PlayStation is reportedly doing something very uh, unique and different. So this is coming from Tom Henderson on Insider Gaming, and he leaked some of Sony's upcoming plans. Now, when it comes to any type of leak, it's always, always important to keep in mind that nothing's confirmed as of yet. But Tom Henderson has also proven to have legitimate sources and has time and time again posted correct information. So just kind of take all that as you will. But he did post a big report that Sony is looking to launch a brand new console sometime around September of 2023. Now, if you were to guess, 
you'd, you'd probably assume that this is either referring to a PlayStation 5 Pro making it a more powerful console or a slim revision. Now that would certainly make sense as PlayStation 5 is a very big console and really they have removed some of its innards with some of its recent revisions so maybe they could go in that direction. Again, I think that would make a lot of sense. However, it's not technically either. I guess you could say it maybe fits more in line with the slim model, but check this out. According to Tom Henderson's source, Sony is looking to release a new model that's almost identical in hardware, but the kicker here is that it will have a detachable disk drive. Yeah, this disk drive will apparently connect to the back of the console via a USB-C port. Now, I'm actually having a pretty hard time picturing how exactly that will look, but it is being stated that it will not ruin the aesthetic of the console, and it will actually look very similar to how the PS5 already looks. So from that description, I, I imagine it's probably going to clip onto the PlayStation 5 somehow. I'm not sure exactly how just yet, but that would be my guess from this description here. What's really interesting about all this, though, is that it's been claimed that this new model will actually completely replace both the physical and digital models that are currently being sold right now. So they're looking to kind of go back how they used to do things with maybe a different twist here and just sell that singular console. And then you can just simply buy a disk drive if that's something that you really want. I mean, there are people out there that could just completely do without the disk drive, so it's not necessary for everybody, and that's why the digital and physical versions of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series, you know, that's a big part of why they've been having success. Not everybody necessarily cares about physical media. And with this move here, I mean, on the good side of things, that does technically give consumers choice in what they want. It's not doing it quite in the same way, but you still will have that choice. And another good part about this is that if your disk drive ever breaks, you won't necessarily have to go out and repair or replace your entire console. Instead, you'll just be able to simply go out and buy a disk drive. Now, I will say I do kind of wonder why they didn't just do this at launch. They have been doing these two SKUs for a while now with actually some success. So I am curious as to why they just want to flat out stop that all of a sudden. I, I do find the, the timing of this to be a little strange. Maybe they just couldn't figure out how to design it properly before. I mean, I, I'm still having a hard time picturing what this thing is even going to look like. But th this could actually be another shift in how consoles work and are released in the future. We could start to see disk drives sold separately to keep costs down. And this also, I think, you know, it does bring up the question of a more digital only future. This could technically accelerate that transition, which is something that these console makers, I mean, this is something that they want. But after last generation with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, it is kind of ironic that Sony out of the two is kind of the ones here taking that next step. Funny how companies do change over time, but either way, I, I do want to see how this thing looks. I, I still have a hard time picturing it, but let me know what you all think about this in the comments below. Do you like this idea or not? Let's go and take a look at the poll of the day, though, where I asked you all, with Cyberpunk 2077 making some improvements and with its successful anime giving it more mind share, do you intend on playing it? And, and, and wow, I, I was actually very surprised with the results here, but 42% of you said that yes, you will be returning to Cyberpunk 2077 once again. 22% of you said yes, you'll play it for the very first time. And then 29% of you said no. So that means 64% of you all will be playing Cyberpunk 2077 with these improvements and with that that successful anime edge runners. This is something that we have been seeing as of recent. This game has been making a comeback. We saw it over on Steam where it had its highest peak in concurrent players since the game first launched. So that anime has definitely given this game a lot more mind share, but that would mean nothing if it wasn't for those improvements as well. CD Projekt Red did not launch this game in the state that it should have been but they have worked very hard since to improve things and make it just kind of the, the product that they had always promised to fans in the first place. And, and I think that we are getting one step closer to that. It, it, with the 1.6 version update, I've heard a lot of really good things about it. And then you have that expansion next year. It, it really looks like Cyberpunk might finally be more in term with what gamers originally wanted. Now, I can't speak for everybody here, but for me, I did play this game when it first launched on the Xbox Series X, and I didn't really have a lot of the issues that other people did. I did have a few minor bugs, but I never had anything too major that would really affect how I would view the game as a whole. 
And because of that, I actually left with a pretty good impression of Cyberpunk 2077. I do actually think it's a pretty good game outside of those bugs and issues that a lot of people are having. And if the game really is more in line with what they originally promised, then I think a lot of people will jump back in and really enjoy this game as a whole. Because again, I do think that it's a pretty good solid game. Now, I'm not saying it's like the best game ever or anything like that, but I, I do think that now that people are giving this game a chance again, I, I think that a lot of people are gonna come away very happy with the end results. So hopefully the people that are gonna go back to Cyberpunk 2077, I do hope you will have a good overall time. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.